last part of this section, um, because there's so much, right, uh, is going in reverse. So we always were given the Z-score or we were given, um, you know, area of the mean and standard deviation to find the Z-score, right? Well, what if we weren't given the Z-score and we were, or the, or the value of observation? What if we were just given the area? So what if we were given these answers? How would I get back to this Z-score value? What if they told me this? And I'm like, I don't know, like, how am I going to get back to here? Like, how would I get back there? Right? Same here. I'm like, this is in between. How would I get back to two values? Right? <laughs> so let's do an example of that. And really what it's about is, again, drawing the curve and working our way backwards. So for example, if I got this value from adding five to it, then maybe I need to subtract five from it and look up a table value and work my way backwards, right? And then from the table value, look up the z-score that corresponds to it. Same here, if I added a half here, then I certainly should take, if I'm given this, I'll subtract a half, look up a table value, find the z-score that corresponds to that. Like I'm literally going to go backwards in my steps. Now it's easy if they give you the area and you just need a z-score, like in our first example right here, it's in terms of z, but when you actually want to find like the actual price of a peanut butter jar or the actual height of a student, you will have to work your way backwards in the z-score formula, and that's right here in step three. So this formula, make sure you highlight or note that bonus, that um, all you need to do is say x equal mu plus z times standard deviation. So you can always solve for a value if you needed to, but usually it's in terms of the z-score in our class. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to um, go ahead and figure this one out. So I went ahead and calculated the area under the curve. It was 0.9247. That's 92%. So that has to be a lot of the curve because if it was just a little, it would be on the on a half, right? Less than a half percent, because it would be over here in a tail. But if it's not in a tail and it's 92%, if it's more than a half, it's gonna be a lot of the curve, right? So the first thing is I th always to draw, like whenever you can draw. All we do know though is in the middle, z equals zero. For 92%, and again, I'm looking for area Notice pointing to the right. This piece here tells me that I'm going to shade right. And this piece here tells me the area. How would I be able to shade to the right and get 92% area? Would it be a little baby tail? That doesn't look like 92%. Would it be over here? Isn't that still less than a half? No, it would have to surpass, if you're shading to the right, you would have to surpass that z equals zero and move all over to the left side of z equals zero. There's only one way you're gonna be able to shade to the right and get 92% of that area. And that's gonna be, your z-score has to be on the left side of the z equals zero, and you're shading to the right and getting 92% of that curve. So here is a C that we're looking for and shading to the right. And we know some things. I know that this area here from C all the way to the right this area is equal to 0.9247. But I do know that this lower half is what percentage? Is what number? That's right, 0.5. So if this piece here is 0.5 and this whole area is 0.9247, right? What is the table value? The table value is in between, right? 
So think about it. This looks like something from way up here. Example 11.6, Part B, where I was on the right and I was shading to the right. This was a half. Here's the table value. What did I do? I had to add the table value to a half, right, the, to get to the area. But if I have the area, I have to work my way backwards. And to get the table value, it would be subtracting a half. Since I know the z-score at this point will be negative because it's on the left, at least I know it'll be negative, right? But I can look up this value here, the z-score on the table, and just put a negative, right? Because I know it's negative. But it, the, the area itself is the same. So here, the area um, from the table will not ever be 0.92. If you look in all these values, none of them are 0.92. Remember, these are all the areas. They're only in terms of the distance from z equals zero and to the z-score, either on either side. So I can find that z-score easily, but I have to be able to get that table value somewhere in here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So if I go back to the problem, okay, I have a, now an idea of what I'm gonna do. I do know that my c will be negative when I write it all out. Let me put it in red. <laughs> Okay, and then step two would be now is to find the table value. How, what am I going to look up, right? Well, I know the table value is going to, and again, this is just simple little arithmetic, right? If this area was, if this area was the table value plus 0.5, right, let's just do it up here. So if the area was equal to the table value plus 5, 0.5, I could easily move the subtract 0.5 from each side, right? And then get over here the area minus 0.5, and that equals the table value, right? So I could just play around with these numbers, right? So here I need... The table value is going to be the area minus 0.5. Okay, well, the area was given to me to be 0.9247, and I can subtract a half. This means that, and I think I'll put this over here now. Let's see. So this means that I will be looking up a table value of 0.4247. Okay, so the third part would be go ahead and find the corresponding z-score to 0.4247. So that means now I have to go 0.4247. Now I have to go in the sea of areas. Now I have to go in here and look for an area of 0.4247. In the C of area, 0. 0.4247, 0. 0.4247, 0. 0.4242, 0. 041, I'm closer, 41, 42, 42, 423, 4247. I need a 4. But then when I go here, it's 425, and this is 423. So it's somewhere in between these two. I guess I could look for the one that's closest, 424, 423, 4, 0.42364. So that looks like it'll be almost one away where this one is closer to 0.425, there it's only, it's pretty close to 0.4247. So we'll have this, okay, so let me highlight it. 424, where was I, here we go. So that's the area that corresponds to that one. That's gonna be the closest one. What is the z-score that corresponds to it? Well, here's the tens place, here's the hundredths. 1.44. Right, so again, let me look. I, I looked in the sea of areas, found the one closest to it, 
found the corresponding z-score. Here's the tens place, hundreds place, 1.44. Okay, let's go ahead and go back and I'll write that down. So the z-score is 1.44, okay? So the last part here is now we can determine the value, C. Okay, so C is on the left side here. So we know that this is the z-score, but we know it's not positive, right? So C is actually equal to negative 1.44. And that's really only because it's not on the right side. So we just have to identify for, that's why it's good to draw it. So that's the process. So the hard part, I think, is looking in that sea of values. But again, if you're given the area, we can always work our way backwards. If you're given the area, we know a half of it is the upper half. And we can just subtract from a half to get the table value to look up, and then we look it up. So it's actually a quick process, but I think it's the actual process that, you know, is kind of has to keep going. Okay, so here is an example of finding another C value or Z score. Actually, let's go ahead and make a little note here. Let's go ahead and make it a opposite. So the greater, less than symbol. And that way we get something different than the one above it. So I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and do that. That way it doesn't, um, we don't repeat the process from before. So let's do Z less than C. So that way we can see that this one is pointing to the left. So we're gonna shade left. And then here's the area. And then the bonus part we'll go ahead and do a little later. So at least we know we're gonna shade left and we need an area of 70 point, like 70, 80%. So how am I gonna get an area of 80% for a shading left, right? It's gonna go beyond that me median point, right? So let's go ahead and shade first. I don't know much, right? So I'm just gonna put Z equals zero as usual. And then how am I gonna get, again, shade to the left, so left, right? I'm going that way and get more than half. Is it gonna be over here in the tail, shading left? No, right? Is it gonna be right here? No way, because it has to be past the 50% marker, right? We know this is 50%. So it has to be over here on the right side of the Z-score. So let's go ahead and put C here, and we're going to go ahead and shade. Now notice C is on the right side of Z equals 0, so it is a positive Z-score. And we do know, once again, the table value is in between C and Z equals zero. And it's the same situation, right? Because I went past the, me the mean, right? So I do know that from the left, the entire left side is a half. From the mean to the Z score C is a table value. But I do know that the area from C all the way out to the left is equal to 0.7983. So this should remind you of part A of that trio, right? Where here, I had to add these two to get the area. Well, now I'm working my way backwards. If the area was equal to a half plus the table value, then this means the table value has to be the area minus a half right? Because I, I can subtract a half from each side like before, right? So here, if I go, come up here for the table value, so now I need to find the table value. I know the table value is going to be the area minus a half. Right? If I can take uh, the table value and the area 0.7983 and subtract a half, then I know what value I'm looking for in the sea of areas. 
So the third part here is go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And find the corresponding z-score to now 0.2983. And again, that's not necessarily the answer, right? Because z could very well be on the left or the right side, depending on where you shade and what your scenario is. So I always just say, just find the corresponding z-score and then come back. And then if it's on the left, put a negative. And if it's not, put you know, just go on the right. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go over to now the table of values and look in the C of values, the one that's closest to 0.2983. So here I'm looking for an area of 0.2983. So 2983, let's look in the C of area. So I just usually start and like scan. Here's 2827, 282829, woo, three, okay, boom. So it's over here somewhere, 29. 83 that's 293 296 29955 so here are the ones closest now 296 seems pretty far from 298 but this one is only one away 299 298 so this one was going to be the closest so let me highlight that one now what is the corresponding z score so the corresponding z score to this would be the tens place is eight and the hundreds place is four. So the Z score would be 0.84. Okay, so again, look up the closest area in the C of areas to 0.298 and look up to the right and there's 0.84. So let's go ahead and write that down over here. The last step is to determine the value of C. So C is equal to, and then C is actually on the right side, so it is positive. So C is that z-score of 0.84. Okay, and the bonus here is just going to be finding X. Um, so the bonus will be if U is equal to 9.244 and the standard deviation is 0.9, we can find the X value. Recall the X value from the box above was um, Z, mu plus Z times standard deviation mu plus z times standard deviation. So well, let's just plug and chug. If mu is 9.244, or the mean is 9.244, plus the z score we found, which is 0.84, and then multiply by the standard deviation, we can easily put that in the calculator and get 9.244. 244 plus 0.84 times 9. So you're just using that z score that you, 0.9, sorry, and th that z score that you found in, um, there you go, 10. In part four and using it to, so if I was looking for the cost of peanut butter jars that corresponds to the area 0.7983, then I would say that is $10, right? Or something like that. So the bonus just tells you, hey, if you needed to go even further, like if you, you found the Z-score, but what if you needed to relate that to a data set or a scenario and find the value of observation, then you go ahead and apply the bonus to find that. As long as you know the mean and standard deviation, you can always find, you can always work your way backwards, you know? And so we did, we worked our way backwards up to the Z-score, but remember that prior examples of application, what came before the Z-score, right? The, a scenario, right? And so here, if I have this and this and this, I I'm sorry, this, this and this, I certainly can find this. 
And that's one of the last steps is if you needed to find this value of observation that corresponds to this area, then you just go ahead and plug and chug in the very end after finding the z-score. Okay, and I encourage you to look up some technology videos inside um, the YouTube or our class and see how to use technology as well. But technology is not required for this section. It's about using the table, a uh, drawing, and it's gonna, I really want this chapter to be very um, deep, you know, not very deep, but deeper with the content and more critical thinking. It's the most critical thinking I'll probably do in this class. All right.